Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. I am back from past summit. Hopefully everyone that went is back and recovered with sleep and those who got nerd flu or past all of that, hopefully. I had a great time, but I've got a roundup for you that highlights some of the announcements that were made at past summit. Reza Rad's got a great blog post where he talks about dynamic row level security and includes all of the data if you're a manager. So he does some DAX trickery, maybe? Some hard DAX, I don't know. But he uses DAX to actually look at, hey, if you're not a manager, only show the rows that you're allowed to see. But if you're a manager, show it all. So this is a great technique that you could use and maybe adapt to whatever organizational structure that you've got, but it gives you a good insight for maybe how you can accomplish this with your reports if you need something like that. So if this interests you and you're looking to do row level security, check this out. One thing I will add is I saw he used the username function for doing the dynamic row level security. I would actually recommend you use user principal name instead of username just to avoid any frustration you may have between using it in desktop versus in the service and maybe potential mismatches that you may have. So other than that, great blog post Reza, check it out down in the description below. Chris Webb from Across the Pond's got a blog post where he looks at the functions in M that are available when you're making a custom data connector. If you're not familiar with custom data connectors, custom data connectors are a way that you can create your own data source for Power BI. This means that when you go to get data, you can actually see your own that you created. So as part of this, Chris wanted to find out what actual functions are available. And he used the pound shared item inside of M to discover what was available. So if you're looking to do a custom data connector and you're looking to see, hey, what can I use inside of it? Check out this blog post. It's a, it's a great little insight into what may be available for you. You can check out the link for Chris's blog post along with all the other links for the items I'm talking about down in the description below and some bonus links. One of the announcements that came out of past summit is that we have a new Power BI report server release. And this is the October 2017 release. Inside of this release is the ability to use imported or cached data, which means I can pull that all into Power BI Desktop and I can publish that to my report server. By default, this allows data sets up to one gig in size, but you can go up to two gig if you really want to. And you can also do schedule refresh on top of that, along with the ability to use direct query data sources. This blog post does a great job of just a high level overview of what's new in it. You can also check out some of the documentation over out on powerbi.com to get more details. Links down below. We got a new Power BI desktop update this week and there's a lot of cool stuff inside of it. First off is enhancements to conditional formatting. So this is more like what you can do in Excel where you can actually have rule-based conditional formatting and they can stack. So whatever goes down the list, whatever the last one hit, that's the color it's gonna get. So you can have some fun playing around with some of those rules and to make the colors look the way you want them to. There was an update for the selection pane where you can control the ordering of visuals. So this is often referred to as Z order, but you can control the layer, what's in front, what's in back, and can control what people see and when. Another thing that caught my eye on this is the ability to have some options if you have a slow data source. So this works really well when you're doing like direct query or live connections, and maybe the response back is not as quick as you would like, and that can get frustrating sometimes when you select maybe a slicer, or you want to select multiple items in that slicer, but when you hit the first one, You've got to wait for it to load up, then you go hit the second one, you got to wait again. So what this allows you to do is select all of them, hit apply, and then boom, it'll go run the query. So if you've been experiencing those issues, you definitely want to go get this update. Check out the blog post for all the items that were in this release. There's a lot of cool stuff that you may like, and be sure to update your version of Power BI Desktop to the latest version. It's also available on the Windows Store if you want an automatically updated version. Normally I wait till the end to tell you which one's my favorite. I'm just gonna tell you right now, this is my favorite item. We have an update for the gateway and the ability to support single sign-on for direct query sources. And this uses, guess what? Kerberos. Wait. Fluffy. Love Kerberos. Kerberos and I, we've got an intimate relationship. We go way back. And people look at me weird when I say that I love Kerberos, but I do and it is awesome. Kerberos is back with a vengeance. 
we've got to use it for single sign-on. This is how it works. You've got to configure constrained delegation with Kerberos in order to get this feature to work. We've got documentation out on powerbi.com to help you configure this and let you know what, you, what you've what you got to do. I'm also going to be doing some more videos on how all of this works. I'm going to probably do another Curb series just to give you primers and to help you along your journey into this awesome authentication protocol. So be sure that you download the latest gateway release and for your data sources that are direct query, go check that box that says enable SSO with Kerberos under the advanced option. All right, what was your favorite item in this roundup? Let me know down in the comments below. I know it was Kerberos, just say it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to enjoy more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.